Yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Someone's about to run up on me with a, a, a chainsaw with no chain on it. <laughs> Do you see that they're they're doing a uh, Last of Us haunted house this year? This is about the time where we get the press releases yeah. from Halloween Horror Nights, yeah. isn't it? Oh, is it is it at uh, Universal where they're doing it or where? The, oh, wow. Yeah. Big. But that's they always do. I mean, like, they'll, they'll use anything that's inside the Universal, like, licensee. And then if it's not, like, because they did a Stranger Things thing a few years ago. Like, was that, was that even a Universal? Like, I, I believe I, so, I yeah. They pay for Oh, really? They pay for it. That's, no, that's Netflix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. But, but Universal, uh, uh, I, I was asking if, if Stranger Things was a universal property. Oh, no. Sorry. No, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, no, no, no. yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, 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 no. Yeah, no, they, no. they paid for the licensing much right. in the same way that they'll be doing that for Last of Us. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah, they have those, yeah, those clickers. Have the guys in a clicker suit? Yeah. I'm in a clicker suit. Yeah. I'm going to click you. Click, 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 click. I don't like this channel anymore. There are commercials on it. Yeah. And then halfway I'm, through the haunted house, the... The guy who made the haunted house will explain how the haunted house was better in the video game. <laughs> the haunted house wasn't bisexual. What we really wanted game. to do was represent the video game. <laughs> that's why all. That's why every time you do anything, a, like bleep bloop sounds play, so that you yeah. know a computer is happening. It's Hi, like <laughs> next to it is like the authentic Last of Us ha haunted house, and it's like uh, you you make it three steps that you have to stop and you have to like. Assemble. Yeah, like I would have liked it if Pedro Pascal yeah. died. The screen just went to black, and then without explanation, he was just running again. <laughs> a haunted house with the game over mode. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're gonna start the Weird Things program in just a moment. TGIF. Yeah. Thank goodness it's weird. Thank God Freaky. it's friends. F F F Thank God it's friends. Yep. It Andrew, how are you doing? Man, you know, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah good. I like to hear that. I like to hear yeah, that you're doing more, good. More guests coming this weekend. Apparently, the word got out. Oh, uh, that your house is too that's, dope. That's that's the downside of of you. You get a nice place. It turns out when you run a roach motel, a bunch of roaches show up. <laughs> I uh, ordered uh, some outdoor furniture too, so that'll be there. Nice. So, have that. you had to shoot any coyotes recently? No, Brian, not yet. But man, no, no yotes. I would like some professional advice on that, or some sort of video tutorial. <laughs> We're working on it, boss. <laughs> Should also add like some night vision goggles too. <laughs> mm, oh, okay. Costume. Mm. I'm, I'm I'm worried what I don't know. Um, that's that sounded more philosophical. I was just I'm scared of coyotes. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to do a weird thing program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, Andrew. I'll count you in for the weird thing show then. In three. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy hoy. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Well, hail and hail and fair met traveler. <laughs> I, I've known you for what, like 20 years, Brian? Yep. Um, you know, when I hear the name like Young, I know where that name comes from. Castillo, it's a castle. Yeah. What is your last name? Uh, I know the fake explanation, and it's cute, and it almost certainly is not true, but uh, uh, Brushwood, allegedly, uh, in England, there was a tribe of bandits called the Brushwoodsmen, and the adorable story that our family told was they were just like Robin Hood, except that they robbed from both the rich and the poor, and they kept it. Uh, but outside of that, just like Robin Hood. So uh, apparently that is not so true, but it is a good story. Um, outside of that, I, I don't know. I, I do think there might be something to the Brush Woodsman or whatever. 
I do yeah, know right. also that uh, uh, Shiba Inus, those dogs, the Dogecoin yeah, dogs, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, depending on how you translate it, it's, it either means like a cute dog or dog dog, or Shiba also means brushwood. So mm. it's little brushwood dog is the <laughs> most accurate. How do you not have a Shiba Inu then? Because I only found this out last year. Damn. <laughs> I, I got to wait for these. Go other trade all your dogs yeah. in for one <laughs> Shiba Inu. <laughs> Just be like, like I'm, I'm, I'm executing a three for one trade. <laughs> Give me the meme dog. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about UFOs. Oh, Let's. Yes. Thank goodness, finally. I mean, you notice there's been more UFO stuff. It, it keeps coming back around. Yep. We had the whole. Even even the government's like, yeah, we're looking into this, which was interesting. And I was talking to somebody who said, and, you know, there's like the latest is some dude I'm not going to name who's, you know, making the runs on talking about all sorts of crazy stuff. Who's just has all the credibility of somebody who's, you know, claiming that, you know, we have secret alien technology, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, somebody said to me, said, yes, is 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 that UFOs are like the only safe conspiracy theory now because it's kind of a bipartisan. It doesn't really determine yeah. your political affiliation. Oh, Is that ooh. it? Wow. Okay, 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 can we politicize all the pseudosciences? Are they coded team red or team blue? All we'll right. start with astrology. That's coded team, team blue, right? Team blue. Yeah. yeah, but that's not a conspiracy theory. I, I said all right. the pseudosciences. Pseudo- okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Yes. Like a, a Bigfoot. Bigfoot's red. Red. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Because it's like camping. The good and, old boy. Tra- and, 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 and tracking and stuff like that. That's no good. Spiritualism. The idea of talking to dead Oh, lo- that's left. I, oh, yeah, what? I guess because it's non- non Christian or, or. Yeah, I mean, because there's, there's an element of pagan elements. There's an element of. Uh, it's, a, it, 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 it's a cerebral. Also, it's like an introvert thing because you're hearing this stuff when you're alone. Yeah. Like. You know, it's it's enhanced by student debt, so it's very coded left. A- Andrew, do you do you co-sign on left on that one? Wait, which one? Uh, uh, on uh, uh, spiritualism, talking to dead relatives through a medium. Um, I, you know, I I think that some of these things don't have to be specifically coded because some of them are just hard to sort of talk about like they're very personal like very personal like astrology like Ronald Reagan was like into astrology yeah right? whoa it would surprise me. You know, like there are the there are and the dipper. Some of that stuff. Yeah, I, I've encountered, you know, some people who I go, man, this person seems really smart. And then they're like, you know, they have really weird beliefs. So I don't know that they necessarily have to be coded, but things that we talk about publicly, like who killed who, who runs yeah. what, who did this, who did that in the in the world of government and politics and stuff, all of them are coded. Uh, and I think yes, and all those all those questions have the same answer. They, oh, not <laughs> yeah. they, and they. they know who they are. Ugh. Yeah, I, I would say the the closest thing to your question on UFOs that I could think of, Andrew, that that is balanced would be conspiracy theories writ large, because once you divorce like the whole mechanism from this one or that one or whatever, they seem pretty balanced. Both sides have their own there, conspiracy theories. There's almost a thing of 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 how much you believe in the conspiracy theory, right? Like. The QAnon stuff isn't like we got this fringe idea. Like they just believe that all that stuff is real. Like I don't know. Maybe, well, maybe there's a certain but sheen of irony Q- that QAnon, is different. QAnon's weird because it's an ARG, right? Like like it's not <laughs> like 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 there are, is is conversation about flat Earth or or a one world government or something like that. Yeah. But that is largely self-generated it's people going on forums and finding little scraps of things that they are putting together and then showing their little science experiment to their friends and and all their friends nodding and saying okay QAnon was interesting because it was a top-down programmed ARG where the 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 person was saying, "Oh, I'm this guy, and look at all this, and this is going to happen." Blah blah blah, and it was uh, uh, there to be translated. But at least it was there was a top-down element. I, I don't even know if that is a conspiracy theory on the level of, you know, a, a new world order or a flat Earth or or even UFOs because. Those are all elements that the static of the universe 
can provide little stories that we find, you know, uh, put together and then tell each other. Mm. I wonder, I wonder, like, you know, like, we've talked this before, but like, when you encounter somebody who's got a really crazy belief system, like a flat earther, right? Yeah. And, and I think that they're really not that well understood. <laughs> not that I'm going to make the case, you know, but the point is that when I've encountered people like, oh, I know so-and-so and they're really smart, but they're a flat, er flat earther. And I'm like, how is that possible? And then I realize like, oh, this person is so paranoid. They don't believe, it's not just they think the earth is flat. They think, they think they're in the Truman Show. Yes. And that's, that's my thing about flat earth is that it really is the Voltron form of a lot of other conspiracy theories because it's the biggest lie you could think they are hiding from us and that means that you almost assuredly also believe in total manipulation of the media total control of the government massive secrets being kept uh, for various different reasons uh, a top-down control by like old bloodlines like there's a lot of this stuff that has to come together for you to then believe it's a, the fascinating part about a flat earth isn't that the earth is flat, but that other people think it's round. That's, that's the big element that you are uh, like constantly trying to prove. And as an exercise, I mean, uh, uh uh, to be honest, we're talking about, uh, do you say Cartesian or it, uh, Rene Descartes? You know, we're talking about like question literally everything. You yeah. Know? Could I be a brain in a vat? You know, I, what evidence do I have against it? And uh, eventually you end up at cogito ergo sum. Yeah. I, well, that's, the, yeah, I think that if you start, like, I don't have like this, I, I've made, made this clear before, like, I think it is highly likely that we are in a simulation. And and I've had other people like, oh, might as well say you believe in God. I'm like, there's a difference between God and a prime mover. You know, like there's a very big difference between that, that something started it, it doesn't have to be an intelligence. I don't even necessarily believe that it has to be an intelligent system that created the simulation. But I just, you know, you looked at, you know, look, look at the Apple Vision Pro, you know, 4K per eye, and people describe it almost like reality, almost. Yeah. You know, it's 2020, you know, four tech is going to be that. What is 30, 2034 tech going to be? What is 2054 tech going to be? And you're going to get to a point where, whether it's plugging us into the matrix or whatever, you will not know the difference. You just wouldn't know because yeah. just fundamentally we do become a brain in a vat or we just create a virtual vat. And so I'm to start with the point of view like, hey, could be, could be flat, could be this, you know, but then you have to go like, why do I believe it is or is it? And that's where it comes into sort of a probability sort of thing. Uh, you know what's funny is it's only, I would say that of all the reasons to not believe I'm in a simulation, it's my own self-loathing that prevents me from believing it because then I have to conceive of a universe that, it bother, that is being bothered to be simulated for me. And I'm like, well, that's dumb. Why would you do that universe? <laughs> I, well, I can't believe in a universe where where everyone's an NPC except me. That would be dumb. Yeah, but you're you you've gone straight from prime mover to Christian God in that in that idea that, that there's you're assuming an intentionality for the simulation. Yeah, and this could you be know, your thirtieth. Like, yeah, no, the, 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 this is ju just well, a me, massive PVP. Let me yeah, let me get like I yeah. I you know when I go run app development right, I go create a virtual environment. I go spin something up. I run it. I test an app a thousand times before I ever put it onto a mobile device. And if, you know, we're a, if we could be literally the, the, the screen, the toaster screensaver of something. We could literally be one of hundred trillion experiments to see what would happen if you did a little bit of a change in a SARS virus and see how it spread. I mean, we could be just so inconsequential because we just assumed that the price of computation and computer thing universe would be a lot but assume that that costs nothing. So there's just, just we're just a throwaway universe. Nobody cares about. It. Nobody's watching. By the way, uh, Dr. Well, Chiron in the chat brings up a very good point, which is uh, uh, it, it does appear that we do live in a simulation. In that, insofar as we think we're seeing light or colors, uh, no, we're just getting input of wavelengths, and our brains are constructing a picture that lives in our mind. You know, just like I mean, when you grab a file on the desktop of your computer, you're not actually grabbing an yeah. actual file. When you're feeding you know. the egg to the uh, egg. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. But that well, that's almost more like stimulation theory, right? That's more like the it's how? all about the senses. And 
<laughs> you know, if if you're only defined by senses, then that means the world can only be defined by the definition of senses. Well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, dude. For, <laughs> Screw you. Okay. For example, I forget where I I saw the, uh, where I heard this recently. It was on some podcast, but uh, uh, I didn't know that uh, the fringes of your vision on the side do not have the proper receptors to receive color. So uh, if if you look over at this archaic or cave cabinet over here, my eyes continue to see purple off to the right, but I biologically do not have the ability to receive any purple light over from this side. So the uh, it could detect a change that my brain running the simulation could interpret as, uh, you know, and then I'll glance over and I'll update my color info. But uh, that, that was fairly shocking for me to realize. Mm. I, I, I know that our side is optimized for... Movement. Motion, yeah, yeah, but I don't know that there's zero color detection. I think it might be more of a sparsity sort of thing. The difference between the rods, the number of rods versus cones. That that may have been um, an overstatement for brevity when I heard it, but but it definitely caused me yeah. to hmm. you know do the experiment of looking in one place and trying to perceive what color well, something wait, was. And it makes. Uh, and, and, well, let me let me yeah. interrupt for a second, King. So that was bringing it back to the Apple Vision Vision Pro announcement. One of the things they talked about, which many of our readers, our listeners may not realize what they're, what they, you may have heard the term foveated rendering, which has become a more popular term, but that came from that realization. Foveated rendering is the idea that if you have an image and somebody's going to be looking at it, like a digital image, only concentrate your detail where the eye is pointing. Don't worry about it the much as much detail around the periphery. And so what they do now in complex VR systems is like with the with this with the new the Apple Vision Pro and actually I think the Oculus Pro too MetaQuest Pro whatever it tracks where your eye is looking and it says okay process that center make that really high high resolution but don't worry about the rest and that's exactly because what you talked about Brian is it just more worried about movement and not fine detail and color yeah and, and the, the oh, oh, sorry Bryce one second and the magic thing about foveated rendering is you can't see it. Because yeah. you're always looking, and it's just you will never know it. Because it's it's just like yeah, you can't pick that up. Sorry, Bryce. But yeah. Go ahead. Well, uh, I know that uh, that is. I mean, that's that's how. Uh, uh, Nope, you got the whole thing. You got the whole thing. <laughs> I was going to say, they, do you know they're doing uh, that? Searching for some scraps and uh, can't find them. <laughs> you use the whole buffalo. It's it's fascinating that we have created a digital version of that, right? With VR rendering or even 3D rendering, right? Even when you're playing on your desktop, the, the, the thing that you are pointed at is what's being given rendering priority a lot of times. I wonder if if we can turn that around and say, okay, what other forms of like digital compression do we already do or could we take advantage of as, as wetware, right? What is the version of a zip file for my memory? Or maybe that is memory. Maybe that's dreams. Who knows, man? Well, that is a lot of what we throw out is we just sort of have to say, okay, uh, we don't need to worry about the fine details we just need to understand sometimes like the gestalt or the point of like what it's like you know you know how you know what a car does don't have to know how a car works mm -hmm. you just hop in your car and you're able to sort of get in there um and for audience too like one of the things that was a big huge development that seems obvious perhaps in retrospect but in the 80s when they were trying to do 3d rendering in computers they realized the complexity because it's not when you have 2d you're working in 2d space but if i have a light bulb hitting a teapot and I have an observer and you start to think, well, how, how do I show this? If I imagine the path of photons coming from that light bulb and hitting that teapot, it's going to just scatter in billions of directions. And if there's reflective surfaces elsewhere, the the math just gets too complex. And for a while it looked like that might be an unsolvable problem, but it was, uh, was it like Alvier A. Smith, uh, AKA one of the founders of Pixar came up with the idea of, you know what? All we really care about care about are the photons that reach your eyeball. Yeah. You know, or the camera. And they said if we just work backwards, you know, kind of like in the old medieval mid middle ages idea that we projected from our eyeballs, and if we just work backwards, if we just imagine the light is coming from our eyeball and hitting the object and then go follow the tracing, trace those rays where they hit, I only have to compute that. And that's kind of the crazy thing when you think about when you're looking at a 3D scene. If you, there's a bunch of objects around you, it is going to be often completely dark 
in back of other objects. It won't look that way because that's not the way light behaves, but you're looking at inverse light in 3D environments. And that's a create every 3D movie you see, all of that, everything is inverse. All the light is actually basically going Laser from... Laser is coming out of your eyes, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. In, in, and in then the, the light source is sucking it in. In, in the early 1990s, uh, I got into 3D Studio Max and, and tried to learn how to do computer animation. And boy, oh boy, the difference between rendering... Now, it took a lot longer to uh, enable ray trace rendering as opposed to fong shading or uh, Gaussian whatever. Uh, but... Uh, but boy, did the results look fantastic. And, mm. and that's because it was doing exactly what you described. The ray tracing was a phenomenal advancement. And and we're already starting to see through the use, uh, through uh, ray tracing in video games, uh, it seems likely that we'll see more chips based on ray tracing calculations, VR calculations, all of the foveated rendering. Like we are probably on, if we're not already on the other side of starting a a new technological breakthrough, right? Like, what if ray tracing I mean, was just easy instead of the the, the most complicated thing we're doing well, right now? It was the the funny thing too was that you know the reason kind of GPUs came about was because you have what we you know kind of the, this tensor mathematics of kind of like computing from scene to scene, and you have a finite size for each frame, and then you compute that, and that's what helped us with oddly enough with deep learning because it was a very similar kind of mathematics for that. And so you do have, you have GPUs that were optimized very much around what our 1990s idea of this stuff was, which was still 2D, was really cool 2D. And then, then you could do the 3D with sequential stuff. But your point, Bryce, like, yeah, you look at like Apple, when they announced the ProVision, they said, hey, here's our M2 chip. This M2 chip is awesome. It's super powerful. But we also have the R1 chip because we got to compute all the spatial stuff. And yeah. that may basically be their own kind of 3D GPU. Yeah. Um, Can we get back to UFOs? So are we <laughs> winning or losing the 50-year Cold War for alien technology? Brushwood? Uh, you know what? I saw a documentary just last week, a little show called Miami Vice, <laughs> oh, that God. correctly solved the UFO problem uh -huh. uh, during their trippy supernatural phase they postulated on this primetime action adventure Friday night NBC original that what if the government just used UFOs as a distraction when they were up to no good, like let's say during the Cold War or Project MK Ultra or whatever. This was supported by another documentary I saw decades later called The X-Files that said the same thing. So I continue to believe these documentaries that I've seen. Bryce? Are we winning or losing the Cold War for uh, alien technology that we are harvesting for our own weapons? Who it's are, been going on for 50 years. Uh, we're, har Go. we're harvesting it from the aliens? Well, we have functioning alien. We have a functioning UFO. This is according to a whistleblower who has filed the appropriate paperwork with oh. the government. That's why we're talking about uh, UFOs these days. And he alleges that uh, the United States is in a 50-year Cold War with various different other superpowers because we all have various different versions of these uh, uh, craft and weapons, and we are constantly adapting them for our own gain. Um, so are we winning or losing? Come on. We got to make air. Uh, well, it's warfare, so we're winning. But uh, <laughs> USA, USA. <laughs> Andrew Main, are we winning or losing the 50-year Cold War? I want to take you back to... I don't know, my junior year of high school. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. So this, this would have been maybe 1990. Okay. And I had friends, we were on VBS boards and stuff like this. And I had a, fun, a friend named Minoch who ended up creating a, 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 a internet service company. And Minoch found this forum that was filled with all sorts of stuff about like the grays and this stuff and all that. You know, he brought it in to show me like, what do you make of it? And it was like this detailed and then this, this, and it's like, like, this looks like a story somebody wrote and then posted to a forum and trying to, and other people decided this is real or he's trying to convince them. But we had, we had like 30 pages of this stuff of like, and then they, they sent special forces to such and such mountain to try to raid the facility. And then this happened and this happened. And it read like somebody knew all this stuff and reported about it, but like none of it made it is. But anyhow, like, what do we do? This is old school computer class where we have one printer in the classroom and we decide to play a prank and we see somebody getting ready to, to print their, their file and we send ours 
And they go over to the printer, and we watch this woman, this girl, April, go over to the printer, and the printer prints out, you know, UFO report, da 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 da, and all this stuff comes in. We're just watching her go, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, you know, and and you know, not not like, oh my god, it was like, what is this nonsense? And I stand by that to this day. I think she had the right take. So we're losing. I think that uh, I, I mean, I would say that. I'm curious to know where all this cool alien tech is going <laughs> and when we get to see it because, you know, <laughs> what the upper level? We, so we seem to see technology advancing, oh, I don't know, exactly in the algorithmic geometric way that you would expect. 10% <laughs> improvement year over year forever in human yeah. efforts. I, I don't want to name drop, but I work for a technology company. <laughs> sure. And while some of the people there do seem eccentric and could be con you know, confused for perhaps not being of this planet, <laughs> I haven't seen any little dudes coming in here like writing equations and telling us how to deal with deep learning models. I don't know everything that goes on, but... Yeah, for the record... Exactly. Uh, uh, That's because uh, the Reds got them all! Uh, Andrew is <laughs> not speaking for Cyberdyne Systems. Let's no, just make that totally no, no, clear. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, th this whole like, current wave of it, if you are not familiar with the story, the whistleblower has never seen any of the things that he alleges exist. Yeah, he's, he's got evidence, though, right? Has he got no, he's it's has secondhand he got, like, gossip that he was told from other people who he is not naming that he doesn't even have, have affidavits. No Sign affidavits. Statement? No, it's it's remember. He, yeah. Remember Bob Lazar. No, no. Bob Lazar was the guy, was the other guy that was always on there, talked said that he worked at these facilities, saw the stuff, and people go, oh, but, you know, you get to, like, Joe Rogan, like, oh, but he described stuff before it existed, like, you know, handprint recognition and stuff, like, that was in 60 sci-fi movies. Like, yes. Like, it was just this, you'd see, like, yeah, everything he described existed, had prior, I can even show you some of the stuff had already been patented. And so it was just this, but you get this, ah, oh, but, like, okay, that piece of evidence that you that's convincing to you is not true. So what else do you have? You have a great narrative, but that's where you watch people. They really want to cling to the narrative, but. Because once you have the narrative, you've got the pattern. It's not just yeah. a, a, one data point. You suddenly have this through line that sort of reverse justifies everything. There's a stroke, there's a stroke through all of these data points. And even if we remove one, you can still see the stroke, you know, sort of that kind of uh, squishiness. Yeah, so, so this this guy is on uh, uh, the panel to oversee the UAP phenomenon. That's what they're calling UFOs these days. These these are government dollars. These at are work. government dollars. At he's work. a gov He's a G man. Uh, he is Air Force. I think he was National Reconnaissance Office and something else. Whew. But what we found out, or uh, uh, on on the We're Not Wrong podcast this week, was that entire commission was created, put into a Defense Authorization Act by. Harry Reid, who had a donor who was obsessed with aliens. No oh, my God. Uh, and became the chief contractor to investigate American alien <laughs> phenomena. Oh, my God. So this is, I mean. It sounds like a familiar tale. It sounds like this is the new refresh because eventually they're going to run out of money and they're going to be like, well, I, look, it's out there. This guy went on the news. They are shutting it down. That was Bigelow, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, 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 okay. So which way are they going to take it? Are they going to make the aliens woke? Or are they going to make the aliens free? Oh, I don't know. It's June. I know. Coincidence. Mm. Mm. There you go. Mm. Well, I think that's kind of getting back though, is it, it is such a bipartisan sort of thing. And it's just, you know, anybody can, yeah, we can all get behind this idea. And also you have to think too, that, we're in a kind of world like, okay, we have AI, we have really, we have phones in our pockets, we have, you know, all this other stuff. Like, what's left? What's left for us to speculate about? Well, and it's funny because, you know, any technology that's out there, we are going to put it through its trials. Uh, and we've done it with 
every technology ever, right? From from bicycles to the printing press to AI now. AI AI is now engaging <laughs> uh, in its first trials. The holy trinity of technologies. <laughs> bicycles, the printing press, and AI. What else do you need? <laughs> Works for me. Yeah. What else do you need, dog? <laughs> Now I just need a robot one. I'm just reading my Bible on the bicycle I'm, and I'm just on my penny farthing stamping Bible. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> and asking for new versions of it. Only this time while I get while, while I get my my uh uh. <laughs> Uh, uh oh, gee. Like, Heat Vision it. and Jack fan fiction <laughs> have, have from seen, AI. Uh, I I don't know if you guys have seen this, but on the opening I saw Reddit, somebody started a trend of insisting that some whenever uh, OpenAI gives a long response, it says, "Be a caveman." Only five words per response, <laughs> and so he uh, asked yeah. for something naughty, and it says, and "It's like." Uh, you know answer. Get help. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw that I love I love whenever I need personal advice from Chat GPT, I I make it a character. Like I, I had oh, a problem really? I, I had a problem with um blisters on my toes from running. And so I was like <laughs> I was like, uh, you're a you're an old crusty running instructor. You've seen it all, but secretly you have a heart of gold. Uh, and he's like, like uh, uh, I just like hit return, and it was like, like, hey, strap on your shoes. It's five o'clock in the morning. This is the hardest thing you'll ever do, but I'll tell you by the end of it, it's gonna be worth it. And then I described my toe blister, and he's like. Oh, you need wider shoes. <laughs> I love seeing. Where and I did. I got wider shoes, and it and it worked. I love seeing where, uh, because of like the Reddit outages, some of the information Chat GPT will like search for doesn't show up. Uh, and I saw one prompt where someone was trying to get some data from I think a government website, and the government website was down. And so after it tried it a few times, uh, you could just see Chat GPT go, "How to change browser." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, geez. Well, here's something that you don't need much instruction on. Head on over to patreon.com slash weird things, patreon.com slash weird things, where you need to go to support this very show. Folks, we've been trucking on this weird journey for oh so many years, and we do it with your help. Patreon.com slash weird things. Head on over there right now. Uh, also, uh, there's been a bit of confusion lately. People have actually tried to help, and to be clear, we don't want your help. We want your money. So, so just send money. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, help is short for money. Help. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 Gary, you're great. Uh, I'm sorry. Just please don't show up and try to help. No. Just send money. Send us your Garys. Send money, Gary. By that, I I refer to dollar bills exclusively as Garys. As G spots. Big G's. G's. G's I mean, up. Hose down. <laughs> If you see like armed people raid the studio, help. Just to be clear, like, yeah. like well, I mean, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, we got motion sensors. I mean, we'll still take money even in that situation. Uh, we prefer, <laughs> yeah, yeah, help. We'll, we'll blind them with money. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of pocket sand? What about pocket change? Da! <laughs> yeah, I have heard of that actually. Yeah, I've heard Good. of pocket. Oh, well, now you know where it's from. Mm -hmm. It's from sand. Oh wow! <laughs> it's, uh, it, oh, yeah. Naturally it. occurring. You keep sand in your pocket long enough, it turns into 18 cents. <laughs> Inflation, am I right? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Byron. <laughs> Andrew, please save us. No. This is <laughs> I, okay, the I whores and politicians that. will look up to me and say, save us. And I'll whisper back, no. I want to do, I do want to go a little deeper on... I don't hear a weird beeping sound from somewhere. Sorry. Could be an alien. Yeah, probably a 50 year Cold War for alien technology. <laughs> my, my, my Oculus is flipping on and off here. Oh. Could, uh. Uh, well, here, while, while you're working on that, uh, it, it is interesting how kind of the most obvious connections get made. Like, we were talking about that funky um, a, a, a oblong uh, extraterrestrial. Uh, uh, um, what kind of. What if that was my Oculus was a message for the future and I was supposed to put it on? Oh, <laughs> and you missed it. Well, well, then I'd say future you. That would uh, be a denial. Harder. That would be a denial of the call. <laughs> but then, uh, so so we had this extraterrestrial rock swing through our solar system, and then you know, uh, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Someone's like, "What if that was the source of all these things?" It's like, okay, all right. Somebody took. Writing 101. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, it's. I think throwing stuff out there is fine. I, I like it, but it's sometimes it's this. I don't know, just. I'm not going to think about this before I say it. I'm just going to throw it out there and say, what about this? But I expect you to entertain my idea seriously. Yeah. Well, and plus also, like, you know, for all <laughs> uh, the way the game of telephone works, of course, is let's say it's during a water break in between committee meetings. Or like, my son told me this story about this thing. And then uh, somebody goes to a conspiracy blog like, I was in the room when the government was talking about this. And I quote directly when they say, uh, what if it was a blank? And then, and then everything accelerates from there. Hmm. Mm. I maybe that's how that so, sounds fishy. <laughs> I've been thinking about an idea as I've been working on this whole working on memory methods and stuff like that and improve them. And I think I told you before, like my first practical use for them now is like I've memorized one of the whole magic square sequences, um, which is not significant, but you know, for me to hold a 12 digit number in my head <laughs> feels like I just ran like a three minute mile. Uh, um, uh, mm -hmm. I, I will say since we've started having these conversations, I have made a concerted effort to like do that, that mnemonic, uh, somebody, you learn somebody's name, you immediately come up with a thing and mm. anchors it. And I've been better. I've been better. There's a dude who works at a convenience store that I usually stop at on my walk. He's got a crazy little mustache and, uh, uh, his name is Harold. And okay. I remembered, Oh, he looks like a guy who would take an improv class. Yeah. And he would have, he would be in a Herald. <laughs> be a Herald. And now I know Harold's name. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I've gotten better at when I have, you know, like yeah, I've not perfect, but I'm much better. I, cause the step number one is you pay attention. Yeah. We talked about that before is you, you have to pay attention when somebody says something. If you don't pay attention, you don't remember it. There's a lot of, BS that we're told out there, like, oh, we remember everything. Like, no, no, we don't. We clinically, that is not true. Yeah. Um, it's like, a magical thing to think that. And, but, and the most important thing is to pay attention because otherwise you would just, it just goes right past Oh, you. true. It's a fair point, Brian. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that yeah. up. So. The biggest thing is paying attention now. Because <laughs> otherwise it just runs like just right in one ear out the other. And a lot of people don't focus Bryce, on that. Bryce, what do you think? I think UFO, I think we're in a cold war with UFOs. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to think, but back on the topic of talk about things, I was thinking as I've been reading all these different books on memory methods and stuff and whatnot, and uh, I'm a big fan. I've been talking to a guy named Anthony Mativier who's got a YouTube channel. He, has, he sells courses, which... So far, seem pretty good. You know, it comes across like a lot of like conventional, like, hey, here's my pitch for this, but I think his content is good and really credible. People like his stuff, and I like him. Um, and he's got some cool stuff too, if you're interested in magic, because he's also he, he looked up. Turns out Anthony Mativier is knows a lot of the same people we do in the same sort of world, involved knows a lot of the skeptic community, etc. All that. Um, you know, he cites his, his influences like people like Banachek and Pendulette. But anyhow, is check out his channel. Uh, but uh, one of the things I was thinking about was the ability to remember, because I was trying, as I read all the stuff, I'm like, can I make connections between this and something that's useful? Because a lot of stuff you see from memory champions are how to win memory competitions, which I have no interest of ever entering. And some of it's really theatrical demonstrations. There's a lot of really cool stuff, but you're like, okay. And then when you go to like some other, his stuff is good, but most of the other memory books and stuff, they're like, well, here's how to remember a grocery list. Yeah. I don't need that. I have my notes app. This is not what I need. I think the advice out there for faces is really good. I think the advice that they have for faces is really, really practical, but I try to find really good practical applications of other stuff. And I thought one of the things that I really want to do is, man, I would like to take, I'd like to be able to remember every book I read. Not every page, because that's not possible, but I sure as hell would love to remember that you what read year it. I read it. Yeah. yeah, who was the author, what was some interesting parts to it or whatever. And also, because like with articles too, because I think about how, you know, when you get into a conversation with somebody and you're like, oh, this, and you're like, ah, oh, so-and-so, and you get the name wrong. I'm like, man, I'd love to have better recall for that. And I saw I saw a video where somebody was, they talked to somebody, did an interview with somebody, and this other person was really good. They were impressed, so impressed at how well this person was able to recall all the stuff they did. And that person went through their system like, well, no, I make notes and I do this, this, this. I make all these notes and stuff. That other person was Ryan Holiday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can check that out because he's got a pretty, apparently a pretty good system for being able to do that. But I would say that anyhow, 
I think if we want to become really good critical thinkers, I think a really good step is to have really good memory technique to know where the hell your information came from. Yeah, and uh, I think we talked about this before, but it's it's also, uh, mm, uh, I, I'm going to say the words rhetorical trick, but it's not really a trick. It just brings you credibility if you're able to cite where you read a thing. And that's a habit that I try to develop starting 10 years ago, where if I have a thought that I know is an original to me, I try to make sure to say in so-and-so's book blank, he brings up the intriguing hypothesis of and then I say whatever the thing is. And if you, if you lean on that, it becomes you know, kind, of, kind of automatic and it, it, it helps out. Um, uh, mm -hmm. One silly kind of practical use for memory techniques is uh, I don't like the extra delay of pulling out my wallet and pulling out a credit card to type in a credit card number ever. Now, most browsers have that stuff in there, but boy, if you just spend five to 10 minutes you can memorize all your credit cards in, in in about five to ten minutes each. It's shockingly simple. In fact, I, you will probably you probably are already halfway there. Yeah. Like I like Brian, if I thought about yeah, it, I, I probably know my credit card already without having like made an active. Brian, hold on, Brian. Brian, prove it. Exactly. Name your credit cards. Name your yeah. credit cards. <laughs> I want expiration dates and, and the, the three speed. digits. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Middle initials. Uh, Put your money where your mouth is. Well, what's funny is uh, in the very early days of the scam stuff story, we had to update the corporate account uh, credit card, and uh, in the case of explaining to John how easy it was like well here I just got this one I'm gonna tell myself a story and so I know everything and then by the end by the time I was done I was realized and now both of us have it memorized there we go <laughs> whoops <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but there are also little things like for example all visas start with four all MasterCards start with three I think all um American Express start with six, I believe. I don't know. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> and, and, and. Well, uh, similar for like social security numbers where. Uh, uh, like I, the area you're born in is part of some of those digits. Yeah. It, it's not even where you're born. It's where you were when you apply for a social security card. Because I didn't get mine until I was five, which is why I have a 450 uh, beginning, which is Texas. Okay. Mm. I'll, okay. What were you? Were you, you, you were in an illegal? Uh, no, I, I, <laughs> even worse, I was from California. Gross. Oh, gross. Yuck. Gentlemen, do you want to do picks? Yeah. Yeah, we can do picks. Pick it up. I got a pick. Go. I got a pick. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so professional now. Mm. Oh, I'm so professional. Before, you know, I was going to say something because you've often just been so amateur Yep, that's but right. But today you walked in and there was an air of professionalism about you. I'm just entirely professional. I'm the most professional person. Oh, Why is that? Is, are you, is this about to be a very oh. relatable thing? That's right. I'm also going to be relatable. And get my two sets of AirPods confused. Oh, I my got, God. <laughs> I got uh, AirPods Pros over uh, the other day. And boy, are these things cool. Uh, uh, the, the, I, I, I apparently had never had like an active noise canceling set of headphones mm. or, or earbuds or anything. Um, and the ones, the way that they got it on these is like crazy, right? Like you can get no, no, no treatment, right? Just let it be. You can have it do like, let's go silent, noise canceling. Or you can do the transparency mode where it's like, we're just going to pipe in some of the sounds from yeah. inside. But when you do that, you realize how loud the entire world is. I'll yeah. tell you what, so, the, something the, the first time uh, that it goes like into pass through mm -hmm. and it just goes from as loud as it actually is just to half loud, it's it's insane. It is like a total brain mixer. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was super skeptical because I don't like the gasket style where you got the little rubber pieces, but uh, they were super comfortable. I've had multi hour listening sessions without any discomfort. So I, I really dig these. Uh, and I feel like my listening has gotten that much more professional. Mm. Can I, may I offer some really bad advice? Yes. Uh, first, the good advice, get some alcohol wipes and like once a week or so wipe them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Cause then my other advice though is uh, price, I have mine in almost all day and all night long. I yep. have two pairs. I go to sleep with them and I forget that they're there. Yeah. And I do have to clean them because I have had 
for ear infections. I'm not saying it's related. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that it's related. I would never. I would never say they're related. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick up some Q-tips also. I'm going to get I'm going to get the whole I'm going to yeah. clean up. I'm going to clean I'm going to keep it clean, baby. Uh, in, in, in in defense of of a company who makes these name names, I do have suffer from eczema and I sometimes get it inside my ears, so I have the most delicate, fragile tissue-like skin. Yeah. That being said, Oh my God, going to bed at night, even not listening to, I mean, it, it, the, the noise canceling is wonderful, but even just not listening, just leaving it yeah, as the noise canceling. And it will hurt at first, but eventually the cartilage in your ear will adjust. <laughs> right. And eventually it, it merges is, and it just becomes one big auditory unit. Yeah. Uh, the, you don't, you don't have like sleepy time headphones, man. You haven't, you haven't upgraded to those like, like soft, uh, head, like over the ear headphones. They're too, they're too, I've got two sets. They're too janky to set up. And you got to charge them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, their, you have to their, charge the AirPods too. I put them in a case and I'm done. This other thing, I got to go find a cable. I got to connect. Then I got to go mm. reconnect. I got to do all that. Yeah, and Lion. No, I, I have I have bows over the ear ones that uh, I use mostly for planes just because I'm paranoid that uh, one of my AirPods is going to fall out of my ear while I'm sleeping. Uh, but it's it's not as easy as just throwing it in the case. Oh, my God. That happened to me charge last the night. Case. Oh my God, that happened to me last night. What? I was, I had them on, I had them in, I was watching something on my laptop and I fell asleep with them in and I didn't even realize when I woke up that they had fallen out. Yep. I, uh, well, and, but, uh, uh, yeah, wow. uh, next level is when you wake up, <clears throat> you feel them fall out, but without fully waking up, you, you just sort of instinctually grab them in your fists like a blankie or whatever. And then you wake up at, you know, eight in the morning and you're <laughs> like, why? <laughs> These are my earbuds. Oh my god, <laughs> man! It eventually Ryan, becomes some, totally unconscious. <laughs> you've got some primal ape man clasping to the tree yeah. instincts in there that are just. That's probably passed think... down from when your ancestors were robbing poor people. <laughs> <laughs> you were just holding on to the ducats. Uh, uh, hey, another pro tip for the pros. Yeah, pro. It. Uh, they might start rattling. That is a known bug with the AirPod Pros. Oh, okay. Right. Um, yeah, like in in the in the pass through and stuff like that. Wow. Uh, they will replace them for free hey. for you <laughs> up to four times, <laughs> and I know it because I got them replaced four times, and on the fifth time that I tried to get them replaced, they were like. We've replaced these four <laughs> times. At a certain point, it's a you problem. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean by rattling? Like, like there's something loose like, banging yeah. around? It, it, uh, yeah, there's there's something in either between the fact that I don't clean them enough, or like I just I walk outside with them constantly. Yeah. So like, uh, uh, there's some kind of uh, thing, but it is a known bug, and they will they'll run a diagnostic and then just replace them. So if it does wow. happen. Uh, do not hesitate and do not think you need to buy anything else. Just okay. run over there and they will just chuck you two new ones. Also, that awareness mode is so, so valuable because the one thing that I'm always afraid of is being that person who's talking too loud or too quiet in, in like a bar setting or whatever. Mm. And uh, it gives you a good anchor so that you don't, you know, shout at somebody or mumble. I, I've, actually, <laughs> I've actually wondered whether or not this kind of technology, if not this product specifically, is just going to very quietly evolve and become hearing aids. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, that, that's well, yeah, that's actually part of what they're doing now. Is that when they talk about like assistive hearing and whatnot, like that is there's a mode for you that. Know, app, yeah, Apple's yeah, Apple actually has that where it'll boost sound stuff for you if you're hearing impaired. So like you know, like older people or yeah. whatever. Well, and, and I think I mean like them hmm. eating up that industry. Holy moly! Like well, imagine and, when, when, when insurance starts paying for Nana's uh, AirPod Pros. Oh yeah. Well, and when you uh, when you lose your hearing, you don't lose it uniform. Usually, you don't use it lose it uniformly across all the spectrum. Uh, my dad, you know, he still has most of his low end, his bass, so he can hear just fine. It's the high end stuff, so they yeah. have to they have to crank that up, and they you get them tuned. But if it can all be done via robot, yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah, I bought my Apple Watch. Because I'm getting old. That's why I bought that. Because I'm like, 
I don't really need it to tell time. I just want to know if I fall down, you know, I can press the button. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, you already bought yeah. a life alert is what you're saying. I know. The thing we used to, remember the thing we laughed at as teenagers? Ow, help, ow, help. Ow. I've fallen and I can't I get mean, up. Like, Look, we all laugh, and then you know, in 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 a year, Tim Cook's gonna be demoing his version of the clapper, and we're, we're yeah, and we'll uh, we we we'll clap, and then the yeah. lights will go on and off. Isn't, <laughs> isn't it, uh, it uh, just a, a brief a brief thought, man? Uh, AirPods, isn't it interesting that they have pretty much supplanted the the entire iPod space for Apple, like. It's a thing you can use, kind of, it doesn't matter if you're Android or iPhone, doesn't really matter if you're Mac or Windows, because it kind of works on everything anyway. And it's this, I don't know, I, I think compared to all of the other computing platforms that Mac and, and Windows, or excuse me, that uh, Apple are working with, where there is still a bit like a 50-50 divide on something, the AirPods, much like the iPod, uh, is kind of a uniting Consumer so you're saying them. that it is Apple's crossover device? Yeah, in, in or, the way or it's that, most, that it's a, the an most iPod was crossover, or, yeah. or the iPhone, because because again, like I don't have, a, but, before, but the iPhone, even now, the iPhone is fifty fifty, right? With with Android and bubbles, you know, there's always a little bit of like, I'll never get the iPhone because I'm the Android guy. But even like <laughs> Android people will get the AirPods, please. Will they? I, I think so. Yeah, do Android say, people I, I, get the AirPods? Please let us know. Do do Android people dream of, <laughs> of, <laughs> of electric Air AirPods? AirPods. Pro, pros. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my pick. Um, my pick is Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Man, this kingdom's crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crying all the time. Sad Link's kingdom. out there. Mm -hmm. He's trying to find Zelda. Where is she? Still on we don't know, man. We don't know. She's appearing in random places. There's cutscenes. Maybe she's in heaven. We don't know. But uh, uh, in all seriousness, it's a great open world game if you like the first Zelda. I don't play many video games. In fact, I pretty much only play Zelda and Marvel Snap. Uh, but the new Zelda's out, and I'm playing it. It's really fun. Nice. Did you beat the last, the previous one, Breath of the Wild? I did. Nice. I did. I did. I was late, but it's better to be late on that uh, because uh, everyone's already solved the game. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're stuck, you can just look it up. Good strategies. Yeah, there we go. Uh, last night, my daughters and my wife and me, uh, me for the second time, everyone else for the first time, finally wrapped up watching American Vandal on Netflix. It holds up. It's good. It's really, really good. It's a good mystery that happens season one, to be right? about crude stuff. Yeah. Or did you watch? Did you guys watch season two? As well? uh, you know what? We started season two, and uh, boy, Whew. both uh, uh, Bonnie noped out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the whole conceit of season two. She was like, uh, "That was a great one season of this show that I will ever see." <laughs> Yeah, American Van I mean, that's I, a, that's such a good show and it seemed like there was a bit there where like CBS might do something with it and then kind of nobody's doing anything with that. Kind of a bummer. I think it's because of the subject matter of se the opening scene of season 2. Well, in car. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who don't know, it's it's I, a parody of true crime investigation. Right. Uh like docu series and stuff like that. Uh, I have two picks. One I'm going to re for re mention that's and re mention again. Um, re mention guys. Uh, Anthony Mativier, the guy who does the memory stuff on YouTube, his name is Anthony Mativier. It's spelled M E T I V I E R. Uh, he's got a ton of videos. Really enjoyed it. Been listening to his book he wrote, Victorious Mind, which goes through his. This guy went through a heck of a journey dealing with mental health issues and all sorts of other stuff that he flat out talks about it. It's just very, very interesting. Uh, I enjoy this. So that's pick number one. Pick number two, and then I'm going to have a question for you all, is if you're inclined, the Apple developer sessions, if you're technically inclined or you care, there's a lot more information about the Apple Vision Pro and some stuff that you know hadn't been revealed in the keynote announcement. One of the things to talk about is like, you know, when you play movies, right, the, the Apple Pro is like a 90, they say it's like a 90 hertz, like, frame refresh rate. But for movies, it bumps up to 96. Why? Because they're 24 frames per second. There's a ton of, you know, a lot of little interesting details in there about stuff. What's really exciting, and this is going to be a bit nerdy, but um, there has been this thing called WebXR, which is the, the standard for doing virtual reality experiences on the web. 
when I've shared stuff in the past, like my Shark VR experience, or whatever, I built them using a system called A-Frame that was built on 3.js that then used WebXR. The long story short is that it's just an easy way to create 3D experiences in the browser. Historically, Safari hasn't supported it. And when Apple Vision came out, one of the people I know who works on A-Frame was like, I don't know if they're even gonna support it. And it turned out Apple says, yes, we are now going to support this. What this means for everybody is that you're going to have the opportunity to have really cool experiences in the browser, which has existed before, but I think at much more higher frame rates. And if you wanna talk about having very decentralized 3D environments and games and stuff, there's a lot of tech out there that like, means nobody has to own it. You know, anybody can create an experience. So my question is, I'll close with, uh, everybody here go to sleep with their iPods, right? Everybody's done this? Mm -hmm. Sure. I don't. Okay. I've done it. Do you think that'll happen with the Apple Vision Pro? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. As long as I don't strangle myself with my supple woven cable. <laughs> it's been weird. <laughs> hey, good to you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> supple woven cord. Oh, my God. The supple woven cord. <laughs> supple. I just, supple. God, oh man. It's so supple. Just, I want to send a baked ham to whoever came up with that line in Cupertino. <laughs> supple. A supple ham, too. What are we going to call the rat tail, Doug? <laughs> How about a supple woven cable? Supple. I, <laughs> I, I don't, I'm hypothetically, I know in a certain tech company, there's a guy they go to. When they want to turn a phrase or yeah. need to do this, and there's somebody whose job, some of the phrases you see, they go, hey, how should we phrase this? Yeah. So I got to imagine somewhere at Apple, there's probably a room full of those people. Oh, my God. Yeah. They knew we would be talking about the supple woven cable. Well, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it, to me, that's them saying, like, look, nobody's happy with this. <laughs> nobody's happy that we have to have a cord and a thing that you put in your fashionable pants. Uh so we're we're gonna paint it red. It's a supple woven cord. Yeah. Like, and so it's like like yeah. It, you want to know what? Uh, uh, where where we understand it's a trade off. The rumors were that you know uh, internally with Apple there were some people who wanted to push it further until they could figure out a way to have uh, to eliminate that. But yeah, you know. Get it out. Like this is it's very Apple-y to just get get stuff out. Well, out. I, I, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's I mean, I'm sure everybody's going to debate forever, you know, like Steve or whatever or whatever, but like I don't know. I'm so pumped. Everything, I mean, I mean, you sent me that thing uh this week with the hands-on for 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 the Vision Pro and I'm I'm just I've yet to read somebody who got a hands-on that is like complaining about anything other than comfort of the headset and pretty much that's it. That's the only negative read, thing that I've read. Yeah, I read one thing by, a, it was a New York Times columnist who was sort of like, eh, nothing we haven't really seen before. And I'm like, maybe on a certain technical level you're right. Like, hey, you know, I went and saw the, giant 96 flat 96 inch flat screen tv at you know costco well i've been seeing tv since 1950 you know? yeah <laughs> it's like, mm. okay all right okay all right but I, everybody else a lot of i read a lot of stuff that's like well could be interesting you know we'll see you know but the technology everybody like the term to keep hearing is magical well, and that's the thing is, is it's it's all about the OS. It's all about the eye tracking, and and when they use it for longer than thirty minutes, well, you know, I think that'll be interesting to see. Not like not that I think Apple's hiding anything, but like thirty minute demo, you can really juice it up. Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, it's like the 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 stuff that to me mattered the most was does the eye tracking and the and the hand clicking work, and that seems to be. Uh, yeah, you are Zoidberging hard. Like it is, it is great. It doesn't matter where your hands are. Castanets are coming back in a big way. Oh, big time! Oh man, that's got to like, be like, the first app. My reality castanets. If you can, if if you can select stuff with your eyes, and easily grab, move, change, stretch, move it forward, move it back. Like if that's possible, like that in and of itself is 
Uh, if that's, if, that's, that's 10 years beyond anything that anyone. Is if doing. that works as a, as described, then the next level you realize doesn't even involve your hand. You just look and like, I don't know, it must've been 20 or 30 years ago that I realized that I can click the right side of my teeth or click the left side of my teeth. And I imagined a UI where all I did was look and then and bite down or, you know, kind of click tap. You know, right you know what's funny. Okay. Stephen Hawking. Um, <laughs> No, I'm serious. I know, I know, I know, I know you're serious, and and I think it's it's uh, it's it's funny because I do think Apple very specifically is trying to make what in our market and in our culture is looked at as an extraordinarily alienating experience, and trying to make it as you can use it on an airplane as possible. Right. Um, yeah, you should. It, it, Brian, you know, you should, I don't know if you have maybe, but have you checked out some of the, the commercial brain computer interfaces? Oh, uh, 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 I, I occasionally have seen some of them, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, as far as accessibility, like, I don't know, I read about people who are close to locked in syndrome. My, uh, my grandfather married a woman who got ALS and, you know, went through the decay. I mean, there's, there's, uh, I, I'm very interested cool. in all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, they have no for commercial, like just regular people want gamers and stuff now. They have stuff that like uses, they pick up some of that signal and stuff, which I think is basically muscle intentionality. And so I've seen, wow. so, and I think that's, I think you're going to see that in future headsets where a version of like what you said, it, it will be like, oh yeah, just here because they'll have enough data to be like, think about closing this box and do that, which, yeah. you know, that you don't get Neuralink level, level, but that you can pick up a lot of biofeedback from, just you know the stuff that's going on the surface of your skin there let's talk about this let's go do this in, okay. uh, after things let's do that cool uh everybody ready to go anybody else need a break oh actually let me take one second and grab a drink really quick uh yeah dr chiron uh i agree uh i i too would love a sub vocalization mic uh the only word i disagree with is implantable what if you didn't even have to implant it <laughs> what if i could just uh mouth words what if you could just put it in your mouth like you did those rocks yesterday? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hannibal wanted to eat me. <laughs> you didn't need to put them in your mouth. <laughs> this is so gross. I mean, you, 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 you respect the craft. You have to get it exactly right. That's true. By the way, how did, how did that uh, post on the gram go? Uh, doing well, <laughs> doing well. I'm getting a lot of blow. I think it's a lot. I think Justin had it right. Is once you when you come back after a while, you get a boost. It gives you, yeah, it gives you a little bit of a boost. Let's see, we're sitting at how many even like 67 <laughs> likes, including Justin R. Young. Isn't that great? No POTUS and no Sonic the Hedgehog likes yet though. Damn. I think they're both fake accounts. Damn. I think so too. Dude, Trump's gonna like it, and he's gonna flip a whole election. <laughs> He's like, he's gonna say, he's gonna say, uh, I'm getting, it's gonna be better than Instagram. It's I really Truthgram. like him. I really like Bryce. <laughs> he's my favorite. He, he said some wise things. Very, very wise. He said he needs the very servers. Smart. I got him the smart. servers. The Linux. Okay. All right, Andrew, you ready to do some after things? I'm ready. All right, I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Add more servers. Justin Robert Young. Yo. Uh, so, gentlemen, we were talking between the break a bit more about 3D, reality, VR, etc. And it's interesting because I think this is this is a space, I don't know for you, Bryce, but I know Brian and I have been thinking about this since we were children. Justin, maybe, but Justin certainly heard me talking about it yes. since he was a child. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it, we've, it is, what's interesting about like when you're watching the Oculus, when you watch what Apple announced is, they're describing a technology that we've been thinking about for 50 years. We've been thinking about, we have had a very, you know, iPads were sort of there. You look at 2001 Space Odyssey, you see iPads there. Star Trek had these little tablets sort of the stuff. Pads. The idea that this, yep. So we kind of, those are, those are sort of a thing too, that we might have this portable computer digital sort of thingy. That was sort of an idea. And VR is one of those things of like, it has the unfortunate problem of like teleportation or something. Our idea of what it should be has been far ahead of what the technology is really capable of. Yeah. And, and we've and, and we've been trying to do it 
for a very long time <laughs> since Between since I was a child. Monitors, yeah. And here you saw, you know, that one of the biggest things that was brought two things that were the downside of the Apple Vision Pro announcement. One was the price, thirty five hundred dollars, which the best argument I've heard for this is just Apple decided we need to have 4K per eye. Yeah. We need to have these two processors. We want to have this front thing that you can see a virtual face. We need to have all these things in there to create our minimal experience. We can't have anything less than that because then it's just not going to be what we want. So they're like, we'll start at 3,500. Then over time, as they've done with everything else, that you know the, the, the pro will always be the best, but then you know the, the pro of 2027 you know, is going to be way advanced, but the consumer version of that period is going to be what we saw today. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look and at the, you look at the iPhones. I mean, this there there's also a clear uh, 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 precedent with Apple for this, right? You look at the iPhone 10, which was like, we're changing the whole thing. You're coming with us sooner or later. And then now all of the phones either have the notch or they've got the island. And then eventually they'll have the island and then they'll all not have that. It'll have the next thing. Um, but it does, it is iterative with them. Yeah. I think that the other thing we talked about was the battery, you know, was being on a cable and that's frustrating. And as we, I think we mentioned this before, as we heard internally from Apple, very frustrated in there. They had a lot of designers and people who like beautiful, clean products who were very frustrated by the idea of this big battery. And there was probably discussion like, well, maybe we do a shorter battery. Maybe we do a 30 minute battery that fits into the head side. So it's all self-contained. And I think Apple made the right choice here to just stick it on. I've used external batteries with my Quest when I want to have more power and yeah. forget that they're there. So I think it was the right choice. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that ultimately the form factor is going to be secondary to the experience. And if the experience is what they are promising, then supple woven cable me like that that'll be fine right <laughs> if any the problem that you'll have if the if, if the experience is that good is going to be battery life not necessarily where the battery is um yeah and so i i, I could i get why they did it uh I, I think it was the right time to release it if you look at the uh the the, the market that's out there you know, uh, there's going to be, I predict, a larger than expected response for it. Um, and oh, part of it, it. And, and part of it is because you're right, this is the first device that's actually going to deliver the thing that science fiction promised us. Uh, much in the same way that, you know, like ChatGPT was something that like was the first thing that science fiction promised us that you know uh, uh just kind of works it's just there it's 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 here now yeah. um i mean what's i mean if you take that a little further like the vision that this is all moving towards is some sort of seamless digital physical world right if if in 10 years or 20 years the move from apple is hey you love computing in real space well now you've got your vision pro contact lenses. And now you and everyone around you have just windows. You just have apps everywhere. Like it, it seems like that is at least a vision of the future that this leans towards of a seamless, very concepty video sort of idea. But I mean, if it's not that, then it's well, better but, battery life. You know, I, I think that that's, there seems to be in the story that they were telling during their demo they don't want this to be leading to the idea of an escapist world. And that was where meta and the metaverse, right, was very much leaning toward was, hey, it's like a spatial version of the internet. You're going to want to live there more than you want to live in the real world. And I think Apple was very cognizant of saying, no, this is an addition to the real world. The real world is where you live we help you live better. So it's like the idea of you're watching a movie here, it's not because you want to be in your VR headset all the time. It's because you don't have a TV because nobody has a TV because all the everybody watches stuff on their phones and their tablets anyway. We know we're Apple. We sold you the tablets and the phones. <laughs> uh, now we're, we're giving you another reason that is even cooler 
to do it, but it's not that you are going to want to live there. It's, it's not that you're necessarily always going to want this on. We, we, we want you to take it on, take it off. Uh, but to highlight elements of the real world, like the, the, the review that Andrew sent me this week basically compares the moving uh, pictures and the 3D video that the Apple Vision Pro can take to the Don Draper carousel monologue in, in Mad Men mm -hmm. that it's like, it's magic. It is like, like you are experiencing a real life memory in a way that you've never been able to do before that you can walk around it and, and get, you know, definition in, in a way that you, you, even the, you know, when, when we watch the demo and we're all like, okay, is this a divorced dad or a, a tragic PI whose kids were run over by a drunk driver and is now going to take his revenge? Uh, that, that experience in real world, in, in the real world, is something that is transfixing. And if that's the case, then this is about enhancing the, 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 the real world and not escaping it. I remember, you know, we, we've, talked of it before like you know my first one of my first vr experiences you spin 3d but vr I had, the, I had the nintendo virtual boy which was really just a 3d not a vr rented it and from then, blockbuster Ooh, there's a yeah. sense <laughs> yeah i remember reading you know the text that it was a very interesting piece of technology because the way it worked was it actually had like this little motor with a mirror that spun around and you know generated the leds uh a very neat tech but not really a yeah, fun kind of, thing to play kind of, kind of stunk stunk on ice. yeah there was other stuff that came out. I remember playing with the the USC MXR lab. They showed you how you could take a, a, a cell phone and then stick it into a cardboard box with some lenses. And then six months later, Google said, we invented Google Cardboard. And I'm like, man, I've been using this for six months from the USC lab. OK, cool, I guess. Uh, but anyhow, that was fun. That was fun. And then you remember when I was raving to you guys when I got to try the Vive yeah. and with the room scale, and I kept trying to go, and it was like it was like describing an eclipse. If you've seen a partial eclipse, you've seen something cool, but you haven't seen a full friggin' eclipse. And then when you do room scale, you're like, oh, yeah, it's like turning my head around. Like, yeah, but like, it's like, no, it's like it becomes real. Like the, yeah. the parts of your brain that just click into it. And I remember having this experience – with tilt brush or something and looking at these logs on the floor that were on fire and kneeling down next to them. And my brain broke because I'm like, I know this is not real. I, I know this isn't a real experience here, but I'm having trouble understanding where this is because this feels like an extremely real space. Uh, and I think that's going to be good. Sorry. Uh, uh, one of the, uh, one of our children's friends, um, I think she was maybe seven at the time. Uh, came over and the very first time she put it on, this is a perfectly healthy seven or eight year old girl instantly lost her bladder. Uh, it was, it was wild. Uh, in fact, maybe it, she was even older, but it's like, and to be honest, it's like, I want to be as kind as possible because yes, it is that good. <laughs> I, I'm lucky. I did not lose control of my bladder. I, uh, I remember, uh, uh, having a really striking VR moment playing uh, accounting at the at yeah. the end of accounting where you have to get into the guillotine and have your head get chopped off. Oh, it's very uncomfortable. And you have to get on your hands and knees and get into the thing. And you're like, oh, oh, oh. Like it's, it's, they're being put into those. It's an, it's, I don't know. I don't want to seem like a caveman and saying, say like, it's, it's new thinking, new type thinking, but like, it's a fascinating way to put people into new positions and new stories. Oh my God. Yeah. There's some real risk taking by a, Justin Roiland. Yeah. There's a, they kept using the term spatial computing. And at first I, I get it. Part of it's like, they don't want people thinking of VR in the bags of that, but spatial computing really is interesting. One of the people I read described that when they use their Mac, they're in their Mac. And, and I think that and for people like Linux, I know people who are like Linux, like they're in their file system, they're in there. And I think that like for here, the idea of like, yeah, you're kind of inside like Disneyland. I step inside Disneyland. When I step inside Mac, I'm inside Mac land or iPod. I'm in iPod land. And here you're literally going to turn over your entire house into that. Yeah. And it, it is a how many times have you guys called for an Alexa 
in a room where you knew there wasn't one. Oh, God. I mean, uh, uh, I, I, I would have that problem if I didn't have full coverage of my house. Um, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, totally. I mean, I, I, I have that all the time, like the phantom tech reaching, like, like uh, be it a phone or uh, a voice assistant or something like that. Hmm. I'd be really surprised if, uh, and I understand why they wouldn't advertise this, and I understand why technologically there may be hurdles to it. But the very first thing I did when I got an Oculus Quest 2 was physically go outside to play walkabout golf. Yeah. Uh, before I found out that the way the IR worked, it, it didn't it totally like screws outside. it. Yeah. Right. But yeah. it was delightful because we were in this kind of uh, this medieval looking castle and it started to rain and it actually started to rain at that moment. I felt the rain on my skin. It was, it was You're like, Holy amazing. cow, Zuckerberg, you're a cheat. No, uh, well, but like I, again, I understand why they wouldn't be advertising this, but I guarantee you my entire neighborhood is about to be swarming with adults just walking around doing work with ski goggles on their face because you're going to move. It's going to be healthy. You, and you, you could probably, there'll be some kind of plug-in well, that, that, that basically does the job like, hey, just let me know if you identify another human looking at me so I can, you know, stop acting weird and ranting to myself in public as I'm computing as I walk miles and miles every day. Because um, uh, I, 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 huh. I already have, there already are a couple of people who clearly are remote workers who are in a man managerial position mm -hmm. and they walk around like crazy people having discussions with their team and uh, uh, this, I, I don't see any reason that even more people wouldn't participate with this. Because this has a camera. Because if you have this, there's yeah, no I, reason you can't turn your camera on, Jeff or Erica. You're walking and you're not at the computer at the desk. Uh, yeah, but you have your CGI man and or woman. Yeah, and, uh, and also it it's like sweating profusely. It's gonna... No, but it's CGI. It's it's just you're you're just talking. Mm. Mm. I think that I think everybody's going to be in a hurry to make this normal. You know, we're going to get the TikTok posts and the Instagram making fun of people wearing this stuff in public, and we're all going to be like, ha 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 ha. Okay, are we done laughing? Because I really want to use this. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like we just did the whole thing about AirPod, uh, the, the AirPod Pros. They were uh, 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 penis ears, and, <laughs> and the iPad sounded like a sanitary product, and the iPhone was too expensive for a phone. And, you know, look, the, the experience is king. If the experience rules, we will adjust to it. If the experience sucks, we will continue to make fun of it, and and uh, you know the the Google Glass will still be made fun of, you especially know? for something where the software and the actual concept is not exactly a commodity yet. It's not like everyone. It's not like one person has exactly nailed what these headsets are supposed to be, and you. It's now a race to the bottom. I mean, you have the Quest, which is good, but it's not for everybody. You have the Vive, which is good, but it's not for everybody. And there's not a. There's not a. Uh, I don't know. Would would as people who own VR, would you say that there's some merit to that, that that VR is not even fully solved yet? Oh, yeah. Far, far, far from it. It's, uh, everybody's doing the slider bar of convenience versus fidelity and social awkwardness versus in-depth experience. Well, I, I think also in terms of a creation point of view, there's, there's conversation and then there is creation. And there's a lot of conversation. There has been a lot of conversation about VR throughout the years. And that was like, you know, I think one of the 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 lesser takes yeah, uh, uh, that I saw throughout all this is like, well, if Apple can't make it work, can we all just agree that VR is something that we don't want? And it's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, no, that's a really dumb take. Like, well, yeah. uh, we want stuff that is magic. We want stuff that works. We want stuff that's transformative. And that we've gotten elements. We've gotten tastes. The Vive was a taste of what that was. The Oculus solved a lot of the problems that the Vive had in terms of, uh, of being able to walk around because it didn't have a cord, that it did room scale without having the thing, so you didn't worry about having to clear a room of your house so you could play VR. And it uh, uh, was super easy and at a competitive enough, uh, competitive enough price point that, boom, we could all just play golf together immediately. Sure. That's great, but that's... It's nibbles. That's nibbles on the edge of what the full promise is. Uh, if this is what it says, it's the closest that we're going to get to the full Monty. And, and 
if that is the case, then then it, then it is. But even if it's not, I still don't think that we're going to stop wanting that. I think that we will still want that. And and either Apple will be one to do it or somebody else will be one to do it. But uh, uh, it's it's the, the conversation comes and goes. The conversation is about the data points that we are getting right now, but they don't really have a whole lot to do with how technology moves. Uh, you know, we're always, the, the conversation given enough time will always default to, I just want a faster horse and not a car. Mm. Right. But yeah, what if is, I did have a six legged horse? <laughs> there's, you'd be on Mars. Um, <laughs> there's a interesting thing too. You think about like our phones, like we know, the retina display, other than we're we're at the we're at the end of displays for phones. Like they're, they're, we can certainly make them maybe thinner and lighter, and you know you can do cool stuff. But that's why they're wrapping them around phones and doing all kinds of other crazy stuff. But we've pushed them into end. You know, the next thing is just if you can get rid of the camera in a way that you never notice the cameras there or just hide it, etc. But like if, as far as displays, the fact that we have a display on our phone that's got a notch cut out of it and we're at that level of manufacturing is kind of insane. And so you think of like, yeah, how close is Apple Vision to, you know, we know the next big thing is weight. We yeah. know a big thing is just weight and size is, you know, we want the thing that's basically uh, eyeglasses. What's up, Brian? Uh, well, I was gonna say, oh, you're talking about for the VR. I, I, I know on phones, yeah. I no longer mind it being any other shape or size than what it is right now. Uh, wouldn't mind more robustness. I wouldn't mind like a double dog dare you to try to get this to break or crack or, you know, leave it underwater for seven days or whatever. Yeah, and I think that we'll make him light. You know, I think they'll get. I think they'll get to the point where they're like this is the thickness of a few credit cards. You know, I think that's going to be the kind of. And but again, also like, are we seeing the end of the phone? Yeah. You know, like throw that to the floor. Well, if what does that mean, the end of the phone, right? Because. You know what? I would probably I would probably survive if I didn't have a touch tone communication device in my pocket. But you know what? I'm pretty used to having a supercomputer with me at all times and having access to the internet. And uh, yeah, um, um, and that, so that fits in your pocket. And and I don't know how far off we are from from the the VR experience being something that you keep in your pocket. Like if time. if we, uh, I did. I, I didn't say that, guys. You're making assumptions. No, 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 no. But, 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 uh, but why are you saying that exactly? <laughs> but, but so. if you look at what mobile computing is today, which is uh, there are multiple flavors. It's accessible to a lot of people at a lot of different price points at with generally pretty good hardware. Mobile computing uh, is here, folks. It's computing. It's just computing. Um and so, I don't know. It would feel very weird to not have a phone anymore. Um, Defend yourself, well, Maine. All right, you ready? Go. Yeah. yeah. I have a phone on my wrist right now. Uh-oh. Okay, so I have a phone on my wrist right now, and I have, I have a display. I think the Apple, the AirPod, the, excuse me, the, the Apple Watch display, I think, I don't think this UI is really where it needs to be. I think there's a lot of improvement that can be done on the UI. And I think as we start pulling more AI in context to wear stuff. I think that UI on the on the watch could be way more useful. I've got AirPods and I've got a thing on my wrist. And you know, I I don't keep my phone around me at all times. Like I'll leave it in the other room. So I'm not always on my phone. But I just wonder, I just sort of wonder like, yeah, we're gonna have screen to screen to screen, but like, would you feel comfortable I don't feel comfortable leaving my house right now with just my watch, although technically I think I can do just about everything I need to with it. Mm. Um, but that's a good, would you, that's a good question. Uh, when until, would you leave your until, house? Well, it, until Marvel snap is fun to play on it. Uh, <laughs> watch has a ways to go. I mean, the, the most common reason people would do this right now, you know, leave their house with just a watch, no phone is because they're going exercising and they've got their whole thing and they just don't want to have the phone. Um, well, I think that it's a hmm. security blanket where we feel like literally, I can make phone calls from my phone. I can use my Apple Pay with my phone, um, and all the things that when I go out in my car, go somewhere, like I never check my phone. When I get to work, maybe having my phone is helpful. But I also got my laptop. I just, I'm just wondering, like, yeah, like, 
I, 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 I do think that we are moving into a world where a lot of this stuff is going to be questioned. Like, what do you want? What fits your lifestyle the best? Uh, as the watch becomes more robust and you can do a lot of the functionality in terms of messaging, calling, and, and light research, light web-enabled stuff, uh, you know, I, I still think that, that the Apple Watch is something that is kind of behind where I expected it to be. When it, when it launched, I thought that there was an entire class of apps that belonged nearly exclusively on the watch. And probably the biggest one was Uber that I should never want to go to my phone and order an Uber. I should always just have a one button, come get me, here are my hot locations that I need to go to. Um, I can, if I need to go something else, I can use voice to do it. It'll double check, show me the uh, uh, place, but the computation's not great. The GPS isn't as good as the phone and it's never really gotten there. I don't think that there's any reason why it can't get there. I don't think there's any reason why it won't get there. But uh, uh, I, I think between that and Apple Vision, Apple Vision, I think, is more of a competitor for the MacBook. But I think there's there's a lot of big questions of exactly what tools we need to get through the day. Yeah, I agree. I That's my, when people go, oh, it's a sense. I'm like, well, it's a MacBook for your face. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, a different different prospect. And that's, you know, again, man, if you can do audio editing, you can do video editing, if you can do Photoshop on that thing and it feels more intuitive and faster because of that eye tracking hmm. and you feel like a big dumb idiot that you ever moved your hand around to, to move a cursor to click a thing and drag it yeah. because eye tracking and your hands is just so much faster, more intuitive. Like that, that is, that's a, that's a high end MacBook killer. I wonder if people, I wonder if, uh, you know how there's like a phone neck, smartphone neck. You know the idea, of like people are just leaning down so much that they're just getting like, yeah, a, I don't know, screwed up necks. Like, what if that's what if the version of that for like a Vision Pro or facial computer? All right, I gotta send you this. I was about to say, like, like, did he this, see the thing? This might be what we go out of. Uh, keep going. Uh, uh maybe the version of that is. Uh, you get really, really swole eyeballs. Buff. You get really buff eyeballs, and you get little like eyeball biceps, Ice, biceps, but biceps. Well, uh, and I don't know. I'll experience it when I experience it. But like, for example, let's say right now, uh, let's say uh, looking at the photograph of Andrew Main, let's say you wanted to do a face swap, and the UI was your uh, your eyeballs. Uh, just go ahead and kind of move around and draw a line around his face. And I guess it would use facial recognition or let's say you wanted to remove just one collar or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how precise that's going to be. Um, uh, I wonder. I would say with AI, it's going to be really precise. Uh, I agree. It, it, it could It could definitely understand intent, but... Well, if you're thinking about something like Photoshop, I mean, Photoshop has cursors, right? There's nothing to say you couldn't get a cursor uh, in this in the same way, right? Something like a reticle, you just now have first person first person shooter vision all the time. Uh, Bryce, I texted you a thing. Yeah, I'm trying. To... You can uh, if you can pull uh, that up. I would I would say this is if you can describe it to another human being what you want to have done or the modification you want made, then I think that it's hard to imagine that we can't get to a point, maybe pretty soon, where AI can't do it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, AI probably wouldn't design a human like this, though. I don't know. I don't know. Look, there's a, so, there's a big medical news story that broke on the Daily Mail, uh, the number one <laughs> trusted source for medical and evolutionary news. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, uh, we might have VR face, but you want to know what is a pervasive trend in our modern society is work from home and uh, a, a swollen eyes, a hunchback and claw like hands. Gr grotesque model reveals what remote workers will look like in 70 years. <laughs> Bryce, if you could just scroll down. How do you become an expert at this? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, this poor gnarled woman. What, what was that? You oh, no. Oh, she's, she's a dump truck. Oh, she's 
was swinging it. What, 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 was, what was that YouTube channel that you loved uh, where they made monsters out of the protagonists of video games? Monster Factory. There you go. And why did they put her on a bed? She's why, working from home. Why did Price. they put her on a bed with a dog food She's been doing bowl? it for 70 years. It's a dog food bowl. Oh, the hunch. <laughs> Oh, do I think it's a good thing or bad thing? Great question. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. Oh, no gamers. Do you want to see what avid gamers might look like in 20 years? Time? Yes. Yeah. Uh, not very different. Wow. <laughs> wow. Dark circles. Is this, a, is this a new genre of journalism? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there we go. We solved it. We got it. Bulging eyes. Yeah, I think I'm feeling kind of like that last one before I did keto. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh gentlemen yeah it's been after hey that's a show everybody thank you so much for joining us everybody we are we've been making it weird and we'll be back with more we've got cord killers on monday great night on tuesday that uh that ac barely holding the line at 74 degrees in here it's a it's 100 degrees outside well yeah it's gonna be a tough one yeah. Uh, let's see what's what's what else should people go? Anything coming this weekend? Anything this weekend, folks should keep an eye out for. Uh, uh, everybody, if, if you have or are a father or know a father, yeah. appreciate if you them. Or someone you know is a father. <laughs> Call one eight hundred Father Watchers. Father Watcher. Oh. <laughs> we would like to install I'm a watching, quick. I'm watching your father <laughs> right now. <laughs> father. 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 <laughs> father. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Callie. Father, have a good day, <laughs> Father. All right, everyone, have a good day. Bye. Right, bye. <laughs> bye. Basic music, politics, essentially, never forgetting